how to win against discouragement. How to, how to win against discouragement. This, this psalm right here is, again, a psalm of David. And David is, as he has penned this psalm, uh, he is writing this after the events uh, that take place in Second, uh, I'm sorry, in First Samuel, when uh, he is in a particular location and uh, Saul is is hot after him, and um, his men is Saul's men are, are chasing David, and, uh, and 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 David uh, runs into. Abimelech and uh, David needed a way out and so David and his men acted like they were uh, mad men or acted like they were crazy they uh, began to make all kind of crazy noises and allowed um, to allow us to run down their beards and their faces and, and, and Abimelech was looking at them and, and they are like, his words are, why do you bring me these men? They are mad. Drive them out away from me. And this is the reason why David pins Psalm number 34. And we all know that the beginning of this is, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make his boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. But that's the good part of this. Because just after Abimelech drove David out in front of his presence, uh, David, it says, goes back to his homeland and he is in a cave. And all of the people that are with him are in the cave. And uh, the word says that they are all distressed, discouraged, and depressed. And it's at this moment they all come to David to try to get a word of encouragement. And it's at this moment to where David, Paul, I, I believe it's at this moment to where David gets down to this portion of this song. And he says, the righteous cry out and the Lord hears. That the righteous, and I have to do a little bit of work on this, the righteous are those who are uh, just simply uh, acting in accordance to God's standards. So the righteous who, who are the ones who are, are trying their best to live right. Uh, you know, they do what they're supposed to do, and they try not to do what God says not to do. But, but you know, here every now and again, we're we going to slip, we're going to fall, we're we human, that we're we going to make our fair share of mistakes. But, but at the end of the day, I'm trying to do what's right. Oh, yeah. You know, we all have a little bit of David in us. Uh, that, you know, we all do some things that we ain't got no business doing. But but at the end of the day, as, as it says, that David is a man after God's own heart. That David tried his best to do what was right. But sometimes that, you know, that, that old flesh gets the best of us at times. And if we really be honest with ourselves, that sometimes not only does the flesh get the best of us, but sometimes we like what the flesh wants. Mm -hmm. That sometimes it's not such a battle that I don't I don't want to fight. It, sometimes the things that the flesh wants, I want to. And because to be honest, sometimes I want what the flesh wants, I'm not putting up very much of a fight. Mm -hmm. 
But then there are times that the flesh, you know, some things that I, that the flesh wants that, that I really don't want, and, and 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 I do put up a fight. But but sometimes I lose, sometimes I win. And if I can uh, quote the Apostle Paul, he says, uh, "The things that I will to do, <laughs> that I don't do. But the things that I don't want to do, those are the things that I find myself doing." Yes. But, but, but we see that there is an internal battle going on within us and, 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 and it, it's, 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 it's our spiritual side and our fleshy side. And how many of you know that whichever one you feed the most is the one that's going to uh, win? Right. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason why. This is the reason why it pays to stay in the Bible. It pays. <laughs> To have Jesus on our mind. Oh, yeah. It says, the righteous cry out, and the Lord hears. Oh, yeah. I, 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 I love this because David, look at this. David himself is going through the same thing that the people are going through. And the people are coming to David for encouragement. And I will be honest with you, sometimes it's hard to encourage somebody when you're discouraged yourself. And, 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 and look at what this, what David is saying. David, this, this leader among everybody, everybody came to him and they're looking to him for, for encouragement and looking to him to, 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 to let everybody know that everything is going to be all right. And, and, and David, who is now himself, says, the righteous cry out. And the Lord hears. If, if, if I can call your attention to the two verses right up above that, verse 15, look at what it says. David says, the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Look at, look at the, uh, the anthropomorphic language that, that David uses, that David has given God human characteristics. So we see, look at what we look at what we see that, that, that David says. That the Lord, he has eyes, he has ears, and he has a face. And not only does he have these things, look at what he says next. The righteous cry out, and the Lord hears. Uh, those who are trying to do what's right according to God are the ones who God hears. It says the righteous cry out. No, 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 wait a minute. If I'm crying out to God, then that must mean that I'm in a situation and I'm inside of something that I can't get myself out of. Now these are the righteous. These are the ones who are trying to act in accordance to God's standards. And, and, and find themselves discouraged, find themselves in a cave, find themselves hiding, find themselves in a situation, find themselves in circumstances, find themselves going without, find themselves in a problem. So I guess we can just scratch out the notion of why the bad things happen to good people. Why? Because sometimes we got to go through some stuff. And, and, and it says that the righteous, the righteous cry out. Oh, but not only do they cry out, but it says the Lord hears. And as I was looking at these verses and, and I'm, 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 I'm studying and I'm doing the research and I'm, I'm going back into the Hebrew and I'm trying to, trying to do word studies and then all of this stuff, uh, 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 this, this word hears right here. Uh, it's used, the way that it's used, it, it's, it's used as in it's done with the intent on acting. Okay. Okay. Here's what David is saying. David said that us who are trying to do what's right, you know, but, but sometimes we make mistakes, 
Sometimes we slip and we fall. Uh, we, we don't make excuses for it. It's just, hey, I, 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 I did it. I failed. I messed up. I, hey, it, it is what it is. I, I, God, I'm sorry. I, I'm trying to do what's right, but sometimes I just, I just go the wrong direction. Sometimes I just have a lapse of judgment and I just do the wrong thing. But, but, but David is saying, those, you know, those of us who are really trying to do what's right, that, 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 that sometimes we get ourselves into a, situations and sometimes the devil gets on our trail and, 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 and sometimes he begins to win the battle. And, and when I cry out to my God, it says the Lord hears. But, but God is just not, God is just not hearing what's going on. But he is, as, as, as the psychologist would say, he is actively listening. Uh, so he is listening with the intent on acting. That God is listening for us to cry out to him. Because he wants to come and save us, but yet before he comes and save us, he has to know that there's a problem. Yes. The righteous cry out, and the Lord hears. And when the Lord hears, oh, the Lord moves. Look at, look at, look at, look at this. The righteous cry out. And the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. All right. uh, that's good news right there. And, and I can stop right there because that tells us. Look at what this verse right here tells us. That the righteous, those who are trying to do what's right, uh, are going to have some problems. Look, look at this. The righteous cry out, the Lord hears, delivers them out of all their troubles. So you having a problem, you having some trouble, it, it, it's not nothing new. And, and, and trust me, it, it's not nothing seemingly that you have just done because we are going to go through some stuff. Oh, oh, oh okay. I, I, I'll say it like this. Have you ever noticed that you don't have any opposition when doing what's wrong? That when, when oh, 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 okay, let me, let, me, let me say it this way. That when I was doing whatever I wanted to do, uh, I didn't have anybody in my ear saying, hey, don't do that, don't go there. Uh, there was no opposition to me doing what was wrong. But, but the moment I began to change my life, the moment God stepped into my life and I, I answered the call and I tried to live for right and I tried to do what was right by God, the, the first thing was, oh, don't be too fanatical. Don't, don't go too far. Don't, don't want, you don't want to rock, rock the boat. You don't want to ruffle too many feathers. Don't, don't say this because you're going to offend somebody. Don't, don't go here because you're going to offend, offend somebody. No, people don't want to come around because they may be afraid of what I might say. Now, oh, you're just going to always talk about the Bible, but, but there's nothing wrong when I was doing wrong. He says, he says, the righteous cry out and the Lord hears. But not only does the Lord hear, but the Lord acts. It says he delivers them out of all their troubles. Uh, just the terminology he delivers them out of all their troubles uh, signifies that we're going to have more than one problem in our life. All right. that, that this walk is going to be it's going to be tough. It's going to be hard. It's going to be rough. That sometimes we're going to be up. Sometimes we're going to be down. But it doesn't matter how down we get that God will deliver us out of all of our troubles. Oh, yeah. I was I was speaking to a good friend of mine this week, and I was telling him, you know, just some of the things that I was going through last week. I was an emotionally wrecked uh, last week. I was up and I was down, and then when I was down, I was really down. And and, and it, it just, I was telling him about all of that, and, and, and he was telling me, you know, it, 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 it's, it's one of those things as I would question your sincerity if you didn't get discouraged. All right. 
Right. Mm -hmm. you, you know, he says that, that you know it's 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 it's, it's one of those things that's, that that you should be discouraged. Mm -hmm. I, and if, if if we interview, he was like he told me he said if we interview a hundred pastors and and, and and they're trying to do what's right and they're, and they're trying they're teaching the word and right. they're preaching the word the right way and they, and they're trying to do what's right and and you you have some of them who don't or are not discouraged because it seems like there's no progress. And 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 they and they're not discouraged. He's like you should be discouraged. And 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 he told me he was like, well, you know, that yes, you've been through this. And he was he's former military, and he told me he was like, well, you know, huh, you got your stripes. He said, so you know, if you was in the military, you would have you would you would have your stripes, and you would be across your chest, and and all of this. And as I was, I was, I was doing some work last night, and I was sitting here, and I was like, you know, and, I, and for some reason that just came back to my mind. So, so I began to look up the military stripes and the ranks and all of this stuff, and 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 what I what I found was something very, very informative. It, it, it was saying that uh, that just because you earn your stripes uh -huh. in a particular thing or for a particular thing. That, that doesn't mean that you won't ever have to go through that particular thing again. Right. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. And so that let me know that just because I was discouraged last week, and I got out of it last week, yeah. and I got my stripes because I made it through, yes. that that don't mean that next week that I may not be discouraged again. Yeah. But the thing is, is because I got my stripes, that should let me know that I can look back on something and I can say, well, hey, I got my strength because that, so that means that I've been through this before. And if I've been through this before and I've lived to see the stripes that's pinned on my chest, that now when I'm going through it again, I can just look back to how I got over it the first time. And when I look back to see how I got over it the first time, I can use that to get me over it this time. Uh, this is what David is saying. The righteous cry out. And the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. They are in a cave, cold, damp. I mean, they in a cave, and everybody is discouraged. And God speaks to David to have him write this down. Look at this. David says, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, verse 18, the Lord is near. We can, we can just stop right there. The Lord is near. It says, David says, the Lord is near to those who have a broken heart. Uh, the Lord is near to those who have a broken heart. Have you ever been down before? Have you ever been depressed before? Have you ever been heartbroken before? I'm not talking about some, some superficial heartbreak, heartbreak that it, uh, he didn't want to be with you no more, so you broke your No, I, I, I mean, that, have you ever been really heartbroken? I mean, you know, like the like the loss of love when like 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 you really lost something. David says that when you are at that point, God is near. Yes. Uh Maybe you didn't hear what David said. It says that the Lord, the Lord is near. And I, uh, okay, but well maybe maybe I gotta break it down like I like I broke it down last week in 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 in, in, in VBS. Uh, that that is saying something right there. That the Lord is near to those who have a broken heart. Do do we do we understand? Who God really is. I mean, like, like, I, like I told the children last week, that in creation, that God was, I can imagine, sitting on his throne, looking out in the vast nothingness. And he decides to say out of all of the nothingness, he envisions something out of the nothing. And he said, let there be. And when he said, let there be, the nothing but ground on oh, something, and it ain't let it go yet. That, that can you imagine? Can, can, can you imagine God saying, let there be? And, and whatever he says automatically and instantaneously forms the way that he designed it before. Uh -huh. 
that, that when God started to create the cattle and the and the and the land animals that, that and when he said let there be a cow that instantly a cow just popped up out of the ground and it had everything that it needed to function. Uh, that's the type of God we serve. And not only is that the type of God we serve, but that's the type of God that will draw close to you when you have a broken heart. Uh, it says, the Lord is near. Look at this. Wait a minute. David, you mean to tell me that I don't have to spin around three times and jump on one leg and, and, and speak in tongues and I don't have to get a, a whole bunch of oil and I don't have to do this and I don't have to do it. I don't have to turn over pews and run over benches and walk on walk. That I don't have to do anything, but God says that when I have a broken heart that he's just going to draw near to me. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. uh, David, David is saying that you don't have to do anything to get your God to draw near to you. The uh, only thing you got to do is just go through something. And I, talk, I promise you this, Mount Zion, as long as you have breath in your body, and as long as you keep waking up and going to sleep and waking up the next day, that there's this thing called life, and life ain't fair, and sometimes life will have you bent down to the ground. Life will have you sometimes up in the air. But I guarantee you this, that one thing that we all going to have to go through, and that is a thing called life, and life will be trials, and life will be tribulations. But God says that when life has you down, don't worry about it because I will draw near to you. Right. It says, it, it, it says, look at this, that the Lord draws near, the Lord is near to those who have a broken heart and save such as a contrite spirit. I looked at that and I'm like, Lord, what is a contrite spirit? And if you look in the NIV, I don't know if you have an NIV, but if you look in the NIV, the NIV translates contrite into crushed. Uh, so basically what, 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 what David is saying is, is and I, I had me, well, I had me some moments yesterday. Uh, I say I went to I went to war with this text. We was, well, we was battling yesterday. Uh, as I was, I was at home alone uh, almost all day, uh, and 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 I, I had uh, like two Bibles, a commentary. I had my dictionary. Oh, we was at war with this because my thing is this, and just like all of the people came to David after the battle, uh, uh, after after this situation, and David was feeling down. David was distressed. David was depressed. David was downhearted. That David was discouraged, but but David couldn't really focus on himself because he had people coming to him trying to look for encouragement in him, and he was down himself. And so as David is writing this, I, I looked at this and I said, well, David, you know what? I kind of am in that position too because just last week I was down, I was depressed, I was distressed, and I was discouraged. But at the same time, I still got people coming in here on Sunday looking for a word from God, and, and I had to figure out what David had found because David found some encouragement somewhere. And I looked at this and I was like, well, David, you know what? Where you found your encouragement, I can find my encouragement too. But the David found encouragement in God. And at the moment that David was disheartened and distressed and distressed and discouraged, that God began to speak to him. And that's why if you hear me say that everything comes to me before I can give it to you, oh, I had to go through it too. Because I was in my office yesterday, I had to be on my own little praise party. It didn't have to be a whole lot of people around because I was going through something and I realized how to get out of it. God, God let me in on a little secret. And, and honestly, it's really not such a secret because anybody who has a King James Bible has the answer to this secret. It says, the Lord is near to those who have a broken heart and saved such as have a contrite spirit. God is telling us today that when you are down, when you're depressed, when you have a broken heart, and when life has literally crushed you. Look, look, at, look at this. That God is saying that when this thing called life gets you down, when people leave you alone, when you are in a bad, and oh, look at this. Where did I say that word? David is in a cave. When you're in a dark place. 
When you're in a place surrounded by you, you don't know what because it's so dark in there. That when you're in a bad place in your life, God says that that is when I'm going to draw near to you. Oh, yeah. Uh, look, look at this. God doesn't say that when you're on your mountaintop, then that's when I'm going to be close to you. Uh -uh. God says that when you are at your lowest point, that's when I'm going to really draw near to you because that's when you need me. That's when you, you need somebody to tell you that I will never leave you nor forsake you. That's when you need to see my glory. Uh, and that's when you need to see that my blessings. And that's when you need to see that what I said in my word. Oh, yeah. David says and tells us that the Lord is near. Uh, I, I just have to imagine that as he's writing this, that, that, that he began to think back on all the things that God has brought him through before. And, 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 and I can imagine David saying, God, you brought me through before. And I may be a little down right now, oh, yeah. but God, I know that you can bring me through again. Oh, yeah. Look at look at what he says. He says, going on in verse 19, many, <laughs> many are the afflictions of the righteous. Uh, so you wonder why being good and, and trying to do good and trying to do what's right comes with so many problems. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. You wonder why so many people turn their back on you. You wonder why so many people lying on you and talking about you. Many are the afflictions of the right. In fact, if you don't have any problems, baby, you need to check which way you're running. He says many are the afflictions of the righteous. Which tells us that this road is going to be rough. Uh -huh. This road is going to be bumpy. Oh, yeah. This road is not a smooth track. Mm -hmm. But many mm -hmm. are the afflictions mm -hmm. of the righteous. Mm -hmm. uh, here's what I saw in this. I heard a, 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 a story and it was... Uh, say that Satan had a garage sale. And as uh, people are perusing through the lanes and, and through, the, through the aisles, uh, there was this one, one tool that was old and beat up and just used. I mean, used. But it had the highest price tag. And the gentleman asked Satan, hey, why is this one so, so expensive when it's so damaged? Mm -hmm. Satan responds, well, that's because that's my favorite weapon. <laughs> the guy said, well, what is it? He said, that is discouragement. And the guy was like, okay, well, why is that your favorite weapon? He says, because I can use it on almost anybody. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And he says that it works so well because not only can I use it on almost anybody, but the thing is, is they don't know that it comes from me. Oh. The story may be fictional, but the idea behind it is true. Mm -hmm. That when dealing with discouragement, it's coming from Satan because he's allowing you to focus on what's not going right than what, what is going right. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. And, and, and I, I took time to put that story right there because it, it seems as if when we try to do what's right, it seems like everything begins to go wrong. And if we're not careful, we will begin to focus on what's going wrong rather than what's going right. Oh, yeah. here, here we are. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. So, so when, when things get to going wrong in your life, when, when, when it seems like you can't win for losing, 
when, when it seems like you legitimately have enemies and, and, and just people talking about you and, 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 and people lying on you and treating you bad and it seems like you are doing, haven't done anything wrong. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Oh, but 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 if there's a there's a column and then there's a butt. And and when I was in school, they, they, they said that the butt will always negate everything that comes in front of it. That many are the afflictions of the righteous. Oh, but, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. Okay. Yeah, that, that wasn't a shout that I was looking for. Because I said many are the afflictions of the righteous. We are going to go through some stuff. We're going to have some good days. We're going to have some bad days. In fact, not only bad days, we're going to have some terrible days. We're going to have some terrible months. We're going to have some terrible years. We're going to have some times when it seems like the devil is just focused on us. When it seems like, God, is there anybody else that you can work on? Because it seems like you've been bothering me. You've been in my family. You've been in my finances. You've been in my body. You've been in my home. You've been in my people, my baby's school. And it seems like no, no matter what I do, you are bothering me. Do you have nobody else that you can pick on? I'm tired of you picking on me. But it seems like no matter how much we do right, it seems like wrong is always following just a few steps behind. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. But God says, wait, don't stop right there because I've got something to say on this also. That many are the afflictions of the righteous. Yeah, the devil may be on your trail, but keep running. If you keep on running, you're going to run into me. And you just know that if you run into me, that he's going to run into me also. And this is a thing that he don't want to see because he can't get to me. He says, many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord delivers them out of all of them. I can guarantee you what the word says. The word is true. And if God is still true to his word, and he ain't sick, he ain't dead, and he ain't hurt. If he delivered you yesterday, he'll deliver you today. If he delivered you last week, he'll deliver you this week. If he did it for you last month, he can do it for you this month. And what I'm saying is every time we go through something, yeah, we may get disheartened, we may be discouraged, but I guarantee if we keep on running, if we keep on praying, if we keep on reading, if we keep on trusting, if we keep on believing, if we keep on holding on, that God will step in, and when God steps in, it's going to turn around and you will look like, I don't know how I made it over, I don't know when I got through it, but all of a sudden I look around and I look back and it seems like it was just five years ago that we were having this problem. That many are the afflictions of the righteous. All but the Lord. Look at this. I, I, I'm trying to let this go, but many are the afflictions of the righteous. There's one, one, one last thing in here that I got to pull out and I'll leave you alone. Look at who does the work. Look at this. Verse 17, the righteous cry out, the Lord hears and delivers them out of all. The Lord is near to those who have a broken heart and who have a, uh, say, and saved such as a contrite spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of all of them. Let's go on even further. He guards all his bones, not one of them is broken. Evil shall slay the wicked, and those who hate the righteous shall be condemned. Verse 22, the Lord redeems the soul of his servants, and none of them who trust in him shall be condemned. Look who is doing the work. God is doing all of the work here. Only thing that the righteous are supposed to do is what? Cry out. So sometimes when you see me crying, I may be shedding some tears, but I'm just trying to get my God's attention. And when I cry out, or when I cry out, whether I cry out in public or I cry out at home, that when I cry out to God, that when I cry out, God will hear me. And when God hears me, God says that I'm hearing you to make a move, that I'm hearing you, I'm listening to you, because I'm getting ready to come to you. All you got to do is just hold on just a little bit longer. I'm on my way, and when I get there, it says I will deliver them out of all of them, not some of them, not the many of them, but all of them. So it don't matter how many trials you go through, it don't matter how many trials you go through it, but God says that when I show up, I'm going to really show up. And when I show up, it ain't going to be nothing left because I'm going to deliver you out of all of them. Yeah. All right. Many, I, 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 I'm 
I'm by it, that there's no number right here. But he just says many. That we gon' many, many is is a is a word that's described and defined as just numerous. And if you look at numerous, it doesn't have a definite number either. But many are the afflictions of the righteous. And I'm glad there's no number. Because then that was uh, we would then begin to think, okay, I I've hit that number. God, where are you? But sometimes we just got to wait. Yeah. Uh, I say that and, I, and I'm uh, immediately reminded of that, that old Lee Williams song. You can't hurry God. All right. you, get, you just have to wait. Yeah. He may not come when you want him. Oh, but he's always. <laughs> he's always, always, always on time. And, and, and his version of time is not our version of time. Because as we look at time as minutes, seconds, and hours, God looks at time as it, as it isn't the right time. Have you got out of what you need to get out of it? Have you grown the way I'm past? I need you to grow. Or are you matured enough yet? But sometimes God will leave us in something. And he will leave us in it when it seems like it's getting too much for us. It's just right to God. In fact, God will leave you there until it is too much for you. So that when he brings you out, he don't have to see that you did it by yourself or that somebody else brought you out there. That when he brings you out, you can have no other trust but to say that I was in it. I don't know how I got out of it, but, but somehow God worked it. And somehow God turned that thing around. And all of a sudden, I turned right, I looked, and I was out of it. Many are the afflictions of the Lord, but the Lord, but the Lord delivers. The Lord delivers. The Lord delivers him out of all of it. When, when, when I see that, oh, thank you, God. When, when I see that, that, it says the Lord delivers. And the first thing that just came to my mind was a delivery service. That uh, one, of the, one of the oldest and probably most known is, is pizza. I remember when I was a kid, I would order a pizza. And I would place my order, and in a little while, they would always say 10 to 15 minutes, and maybe 20, maybe 25 minutes. But just know we're on our way. And they're going to bring what I ordered to me. I ain't got to go nowhere, but they're going to bring it to me. And not only are they going to bring it to me, but it's going to be just what I ordered, uh -huh. just how I ordered it, uh -huh. and they're going to bring it to me. Right. But here's the thing, <laughs> is I had to wait on it, yes. because if they would have brought it to me, oof, if they would have brought it to me right when I ordered it, it wouldn't have done me no good because it just would have been some raw materials and ingredients. And in fact, if they would have brought me the raw materials and ingredients, not only was what designed to help me, it would have hurt me because it wasn't cooked. And so when they had to let it go through the process, and once it went through the process and it was done, then they brought it to me the way that I ordered it, and they brought it to me. I didn't have to go nowhere. I didn't have to go look, looking for it. But they brought it to me. Once it was done, they brought it to me. Okay. God, you see what I'm going through. God, I, I, I'm tired of hurting. God, I'm tired of being depressed. God, I'm tired of going through this battle of discouragement. God, I'm tired of going through this when it seems like day in and day out, I'm hurting, I'm in pain. You see what I'm going through, God. I know that if you wanted to step in right now, you can step in right now. God, I know that you can step
snap your fingers and everything would be all right. But God, I know I have to go through the process. David is writing this. He Look at this. He is writing this encouragement thing as he is in the cave. Yes. He hadn't even made it out yet. So what I'm saying is whoever is going through something, I dare you to do what Psalm uh, 34 says and praise your way out of it. Yes. Bring yes. your way out of it. Yes. Look at what David says. Look at the of it. I will bless the Lord at all times. Yes. Right now I'm in this cave. It's dark. Yes. It's cold. It's wet. I don't know what's creeping and crawling around along, but I will bless the Lord at all times and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. And when he gets down and he begins to encourage somebody else, he says, the Lord will deliver them. He says, the righteous cry out and the Lord hears. He says, many are the afflictions of the righteous. But don't stop right there. I know you're going through something right now. I know you're hurting right now. I know you're in pain right now. I know you're in a place where you can't see your way out. I know many are the afflictions of the righteous. But just hold on. Hang on in there just a little while longer. Because your butt is on the way. Your butt is coming. Your butt is coming. When your butt comes, God will deliver you out of all of it. And just hang on because your butt is coming. That many are the afflictions of the righteous. Oh, but hold on because but, but the Lord delivers them out of all of them. And here's what's going to happen. is when God begins to step into your situation, you ain't got to go nowhere. You ain't got to do nothing. You ain't got to spin around three times, hop on one leg. You ain't got to speak in tongues. You ain't got to be slapped down with some oil. But God will come to you to deliver you. God will bring you what you need to get out of this. That God will bring you the encouragement that you need to get out of it. That God will bring you the hope that you need. That God will bring you the peace that you need. That God will bring you the love that you need. That God will bring you the joy that you need. And how do I know? Because greater is he that is within me than he that is within the world. And it is joy that I have the world in giving and the world can't take it away. That I'm so glad that when I held on just a little while longer to God, that he brought me out of that depressing situation. When I held on closer to God, he brought me out of that discouraging situation. And now, my feet are planted on the rock, and that rock is none other than Jesus Christ. God, God, I was there last week, but oh, I'm up right now, and I know that sooner or later, that God is going to work it out. Even if we never have a church full of people, that he is going to work it out. Even if we never grow, he's going to work it out. That I know, I know, that 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 if I keep preaching his word, if I keep teaching his word, that God will get the glory. And even if it's just for the 15 of us in here, that we're going to be the best disciples that he's ever seen. Even if we never get to number 16, all, all of us in here, we're going to be taught in the word. We're going to know who God is. And when God comes to get us, he's going to say, well done, well done. 